Hello and welcome back. We've done the work to get that email address passed through the URL params and uh, preload or pre-populate the login form. So now at this stage, we're ready to, to move on to implementing the, the fetch request that will take the values from that login form and send it over to the API and we'll get a, and handle whatever response we get back from there. So let's get straight into it and just make sure your live server is running and you've got your backend API server running. And under this window.onload function, let's just give ourselves some more space to work here. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to grab a hold of the a reference to this uh, login button here. And if we just quickly take a look at the HTML, we'll see we have the, the button that we, that's got this type submit on it. At this point in time, if you just click on the login button, it just takes you to the, the profile page. We've implemented the, that check to see if it's authenticated. For now, all I want to do is just remove this href. That was just a temporary thing that we needed to do. And now that we're doing the work to actually make this, we'll implement the logic to make this work properly, we can remove that. So let's get started by making a reference to document here. And let's use the, the get element by ID method. And let's have a look for that login button. We double check the, the reference here. So it is referenced as a class, so we can just quickly change this to an ID. And, in, and instead of this form button, let's just change this to login button. I think that make, will make more sense. And so we've got document get element by ID and we're checking for that login button. Once we have it, let's add an event listener. We're gonna use that click event. Then we'll just handle this with a callback. And we want this callback to be asynchronous and it's just going to take in the, the event as an argument. So I'm just gonna give us some more space here to work with. I'm gonna open up that, that function body. And for now, let's just use our alert to check if we are have got a, a reference to this click event. So we'll say testing click event. So if I click on this login button, we see that the alert pops up. So that's working well. I do notice that our login button has lost styling. That's because we've changed that from a class to an ID. And so I think we need to, we'll have to adjust that to be login button and we'll just need to use the ID selector there. And once we've uh, adjusted that, you'll see that it goes back to the original styling. And so back to our JavaScript file, we can remove this alert. And while we're here, we can just grab a hold of this event and we can just use the prevent default. And the next step is we want to grab a hold of the, the email and the password values. So we'll just say const email and then we'll use the document.get element by ID. And we'll make a reference to email and let's just double check. The ID is email, that's correct. So we can just grab a hold of the value. We can do the exact same thing for password. We'll say dot get element by ID. We'll grab a hold of that password and again grab a hold of the value. And the last HTML element that we need to create a binding to is this error message. And again, this is referenced with a, a class here. So let's let's change that to ID and we'll double check in our CSS file for we'll just do a search. We'll just do a search in here for error message. It actually is using the ID selector there, so that's fine. So now that we've changed it, we, we can just do the last binding here. We can call this error, error message div. And in the same way, we can use get element by ID. We'll look for error message. And we don't need to get the value. We just want to uh, reference that dumb element. Now that we have those three, let's just put a debugger here. Uh, just make sure you've got your, your dev tools open. By doing a quick test, so let's like leave the, the form blank and click on the login and we hit this debugger here. And if I hover over these values, you'll see they're all empty strings, but at least we can be sure that we've got a, a reference to each one of these things. So, so far, so good. Can remove that debugger. And the next thing we want to do here is implement just a quick conditional check, which will act as some very lightweight validation. So we'll just do a conditional check here to see if there is, or if any of the values of email or password is falsy. Then we can handle that by updating the, the error message div. Uh, we'll set the inner HTML to some type of value. We'll say something like incomplete form that or feels required. 
And then once we've set that, we can just return early from this whole callback function that's happening on this click. And in that way, a user will, will be prevented from taking any further action if there is nothing in there. So let's test that right now. If I click on the, the login over here, you'll see we get this error message in the red text, just doing that error, incomplete form, all fields required. Let me just put a period at the end there. And so far, so good. Like I said, this is a very lightweight validation. We can do further checks to check for uh, strings and numbers and, and, and all of those different things, but let's not get into that uh, too much. I think just those simple checks will, will help for now. Our API is going to be doing all of the, the heavier lifting in terms of, of those kind of checks, and then we can handle the, the HTTP status codes that returned if there are any bad requests or unauthorized users. Let's take a, a short break here. We'll carry on implementing the rest of the work in the next one. So I'll see you on over there. Cheers for now.